we begin with information about the slope of a function as well as an initial condition. And what we're going to find useful for the various parts of this question will be the point-slope form for tangent lines and the method of separation of variables. So we can start with part A, which simply asks us to find the slope, the graph where x equals 1. Well, the slope is in terms of both x and y, and so it's key that we use the fact that when x equals 1, y equals 4. And so we're going to write that the slope equals 3x squared plus 1 over 2y evaluated at 1 comma 4. That's going to be uh, 3 times 1 squared plus 1 over 2 times 4, which is 4 over 8, or 1 half. Part B asks for the equation of the tangent line at this point, the line tangent to the curve. So we're going to use that point-slope formula. We're going to write y minus 4, that's our y1 value, equals the slope that we calculated in the previous step times x minus our x value. Now we're going to rearrange that because they want us to find uh, f of 1.2. So we're going to write um, y equals 1 half x minus a half plus 4. So we're going to simplify that to plus 7 halves. And so y of 1.2 equals 1 half of 1.2 plus 7 halves. And that's going to be a half of 1.2 is 0.6. 7 halves can also be written as 3.5, and so we get 4.1. Now, there are some subtleties between the difference between uh, f and y, but for most of our purposes, we can just treat y and f interchangeably. I know that makes purists cringe, but this is not an explication of how y and f are subtly different. This is just a free response question. So part c is the heart of this problem. We have to use separation of variables to find f as a function of x. So let's begin. We have dy dx equals 3x squared plus 1 over 2y. And therefore, we can separate this into the following. We can write 2y dy equals 3x squared plus 1 dx. Sorry, that should be dx. Now we're going to integrate both sides separately. Keep writing dy there, that should be dx. Okay, well the integral of y with respect to y is y squared over 2, but that's that over 2 is cancelled by the factor of 2 here. So this left-hand side is going to give us y squared plus c. And again, when we integrate x squared, we're going to get x cubed over 3, but that's 
that over 3 is canceled by the 3 here, so we have x cubed. The integral of 1 with respect to x is just x, and again plus c. Now, we combine these c's because they're simply a representation of the information we don't know. It's not as if they are two separate and distinct uh, variables, both of which we have to solve for. So I'm going to combine them up here and write uh, y squared equals x cubed plus x plus c. I want to solve for y, and so I need to take the square root. I have to be careful to remember that uh, y is going to be plus or minus the square root. So I'm going to write y equals plus or minus the square root of x cubed plus x plus c. Now I make use of the initial condition. And so I know that 4 equals plus or minus, we still don't know yet, but we're going to in just a moment. 1 cubed plus 1 plus c. Well, we can see from this that to make this come out right, first of all, we're going to choose the positive of the plus minus option. And the square root of something will then have to equal 4. c, therefore, has to contribute to this value equaling 16, and so c is going to have to be 14. So, I can now write that y equals the positive choice of the square root function, x cubed plus x plus 14. And uh, they, they talk about that being f of x, so I'll just throw that in. But again, there's an equivalence here, as far as we're concerned, between the y and the f of x. In part d, we're simply using that to approximate f of 1.2. And so we're going to write f of 1.2 equals square root of 1.2 cubed plus 1.2 plus 14. This is a calculator problem. So I've already gone ahead and put in the formula that we arrived at for f of x. And so I can simply now evaluate that. I invoke that variable. and evaluate it for 1.2. OK, so just a word about the y versus f. The way that we're using this, um, y pertains to the height of the function independent of initial condition. So we can still work with the c. But the particular solution that includes the point 1, 4 is what we mean by the f function.